Hey there, I'm Melissa. Before we jump into the whirlwind that my life became, please hit that like button and subscribe for more stories like mine. Now let's get back to where it all started. Life with John was a dream come true, at least at the beginning. We were newlyweds, basking in the glow of a promising future together. Our small house, with its white picket fence and a garden that bloomed year-round, was the perfect setting for our love story. Melissa, this business idea I've got, it's going to change everything for us. John told me one evening as we sat by the fireplace, the crackling sound of burning wood filling the quiet moments between our talks. He laid out his plans on the coffee table, his fingers dancing over charts and diagrams, with a fervor that only a dreamer possesses. It's a tech startup, focusing on innovative digital marketing solutions for small businesses. Think about it. With your inheritance, we can bootstrap without taking on debt. It's foolproof, he explained with a twinkle in his eye, his enthusiasm infectious. I believed in him, in us. Let's do it, John. Let's build this together, I said, my voice tinged with excitement. We toasted to our future, our glasses clinking in the soft light, sealing our fateful decision. Days turned into weeks, and our home buzzed with the energy of shared dreams. John would rush to show me the latest prototype, or share a snippet of a business meeting that went well. I was involved in every decision, from branding to choosing the office space. It felt like we were on the brink of something revolutionary. Melissa, I couldn't do this without you, John confessed one night, pulling me close. This isn't just my dream, it's our dream. The office we rented downtown became our second home. I loved visiting, bringing homemade lunches and decorating the space. Each visit, John would unveil a new aspect of the business, his voice full of pride and hope. However, as the business grew, so did the distance between us. John's once frequent updates became scarce. His smiles, once reserved for our quiet evenings, were now given out in meetings. His phone, previously left carelessly around the house, now never left his side. John, you've been coming home so late. Is everything all right at work? I asked one night, the unease in my voice hard to hide. Ah, uh, it's just the usual startup grind, Melissa. You know how it is, he replied, his voice soothing yet distant. Don't worry, everything's under control. But the more he reassured me, the more my doubts grew. His evasiveness about the business finances, his newfound secrecy, it didn't add up. Something was amiss, and the sinking feeling in my stomach told me it was something big. One evening, I found a receipt from a high-end restaurant tucked in his coat. It was for two, dated a night he said he'd been working late. My heart pounded as the pieces of a puzzle I didn't want to complete began to fall into place. I decided then that I needed to know the truth, no matter how much it hurt. If our dream was going to survive, it needed to be built on trust, and trust required truth. But confronting that truth would have to wait. For now, I needed more than just suspicions. I needed undeniable proof of whatever was lurking beneath John's sudden changes, and I was determined to find it. Hey, Melissa, what's up? You look a bit off today, my friend Linda said as we met for coffee. The worry must have been clear on my face. It's John. Something's not right. He's away a lot. And when he's home, it's like his mind is somewhere else. Have you talked to him about it? Maybe he's just stressed, you know, startup life and all. I've tried, but he brushes it off, says it's all part of the hustle. Later that evening, the silence of our home weighed heavily as I sat staring at the screen of our shared computer. Deciding to dig a little, I logged into our online banking. My heart sank. The account we had saved our entire future in read nearly zero. This can't be right. I muttered to myself, scrolling through the transaction history. There were multiple large withdrawals over the past few months, all when John claimed to be making business investments. I barely slept that night. And the next day, I was a bundle of nerves waiting for John to come home. When he finally did, I confronted him. There's almost nothing left in our account. John, where's all the money going? Melissa, babe, calm down. It's all reinvested into securing more inventory and some emergent marketing strategies. Trust me, it's going to pay off. But why wouldn't you tell me about such big decisions? I thought we were in this together. We are, but I didn't want to stress you out. You know I'm handling it. I wanted to believe him, really, I did. But the doubts wouldn't leave me alone. The next day, I decided to follow him when he left for work. 
He drove across town, not to our office, but to a high-end electronics store. I watched from a distance as John met with someone I'd never seen before. They shook hands, a bit too enthusiastically for a casual meeting. That doesn't look like work, I muttered, snapping a picture with my phone for later. Back home, John continued as if nothing was amiss. But now, I needed answers more than ever. John, who was the guy at the electronics store today? Wait, you were following me? Melissa, that's just a supplier, nothing suspicious. But we don't need electronic supplies for our business, John. It's for a new venture I'm thinking about, part of a bigger expansion plan. The lies were becoming too much. That night, I couldn't shake off the chill that had settled over my heart. I lay in bed, watching John sleep, wondering what happened to the man I married. The next morning, I made a call that I never thought I would have to make. Hey, Linda, can you help me with something? It's important. Of course, what's going down? I need to find a good private investigator. I think John is hiding something big, and I need to know what it is. You got it, Melissa. Let's uncover the truth, no matter what it is. Armed with my friend's support and a burning need for the truth, I set the wheels in motion. Hiring a private investigator felt like something out of a movie, but there I was, handing over photos and details to a man with a promise that he'd discreetly track John's movements. As days turned into a week, the PI came back with news that turned my world upside down. John wasn't just draining our finances, he was funneling money into a secret account and meeting with known gamblers. This can't be happening, I whispered, the printouts from the PI trembling in my hands. The evidence was undeniable, and so was the betrayal. I had to confront John, but this time I needed to be prepared for anything. My next move would have to be calculated with precision, for my own safety, and for the remnants of the life I thought we were building together. John outpaced my plan for the confrontation. Following his vanishing act, I sought solace in Linda's extra space, every box I lugged in serving as a harsh reminder of the life I once knew. I just don't understand how he could do this to me, I said, as Linda helped me settle in. It's going to be okay, Melissa. We're going to figure this out. Linda reassured me, her presence a constant comfort. The next step was confronting the legal and financial mess John left behind. I arranged meetings with Samantha, a sharp-witted lawyer, and Mr. Green, a seasoned financial advisor, who both seemed determined to unearth every deceit. Based on these transactions, it's clear he's been misusing your funds for quite some time, likely to support a gambling habit, Samantha explained, laying out the bank statements across her desk. I gave him everything, trusted him with my whole heart. How could he use me like this? The pain was raw, every word from Samantha a twist of the knife that John had already lodged in my back. It's a betrayal, no doubt. But now we fight back, Melissa. We'll start by freezing all accounts and tracking down every transaction. Samantha's voice was firm, her resolve mirroring my need for justice. In the weeks that followed, I dug through piles of documents and bank statements, Mr. Green at my side. These withdrawals here, all sizable amounts sent offshore. It's classic laundering and gambling, he pointed out. Why use my name for all this? My voice barely a whisper, dreading the answer. He was protecting himself from creditors, a common tactic among gamblers, Mr. Green explained, his tone clinical yet sympathetic. With each revelation, my despair deep and profound transformed gradually into a steely resolve. I wasn't just a victim. I was a fighter, reclaiming what was mine. Mr. Green, what's our next step? I want to make sure he never does this to anyone else, I stated, my determination hardening. We'll contest the transactions for fraud and work with the banks to uncover more about where this money went. It's not just about recovering funds now. It's about setting a precedent, Mr. Green reassured me, his strategy clear. As the legal battles unfolded, my days were a mix of working to rebuild my finances and attending meetings with Samantha and Mr. Green. Each successful claim against the transactions felt like a small victory in a larger war. One evening, after a particularly grueling session with the banks, Linda handed me a cup of coffee, her smile gentle. You're doing great, Melissa. Look at how far you've come. Yeah, I guess I am, I acknowledged, allowing myself a rare moment to feel proud. I was the months past, the tangled web of John's deceit unraveled further. Bank after bank recognized the fraud, reversing many of the transactions. It wasn't complete restitution, but it was enough to give me a new foundation. 
Through it all, the absence of John turned from a source of agony into a relief. Wherever he was, whatever hole he was hiding in, he had lost. He hadn't broken me. Instead, he had forged me into something harder, stronger. As the sun peeked through the curtains of my temporary bedroom at Linda's place, the alarm clock buzzed insistently. Wiping the sleep from my eyes, I braced myself for another long day. Ready for the grind? Linda called out from the kitchen, her voice a mix of encouragement and sympathy. Let's just say I'm getting there. Coffee first, though. I managed a smile, accepting the steaming mug she offered. The months following John's betrayal saw me juggling two part-time jobs, a barista by morning and a retail associate by afternoon. The routine was grueling but necessary. Every paycheck was a small step toward regaining my independence. During a quiet moment at the coffee shop, my manager, Rick, noticed the dark circles under my eyes. You're pushing too hard, Melissa. Don't burn out on us now. I don't really have a choice, Rick. It's all part of getting my life back on track. Well, just know we all got your back here. Gratitude washed over me. Even in my lowest moments, I found allies. It wasn't just about earning money. It was about building back the trust that John had shattered. After work, therapy sessions became my sanctuary. Sitting across from my therapist, Dr. Ellis, I delved into the emotional chaos that had become my life. It feels like I'm constantly fighting, Dr. Ellis. Fighting to stay afloat. Fighting not to fall apart. And yet, you keep moving forward. That's what resilience looks like, Melissa. Her words often echoed in my head during my lowest moments, a gentle reminder that I was stronger than I realized. One afternoon, while folding clothes at the retail job, Linda dropped by, her face lit up with excitement. Guess who just kicked some serious legal butt today? I'm hoping you're talking about me. Your bank finally caved. They're reversing more fraudulent charges. You're winning, Melika. That news brought a rare, genuine smile to my face. Each victory, no matter how small, felt monumental. Thanks for sticking by me through all this, Linda. I couldn't have done it without you. You know I'm always here for you. Plus, we need to celebrate every win. Drinks on me tonight? Deal, but just one. I've got an early shift tomorrow. As weeks turned into months, my financial situation slowly stabilized. I opened a new bank account, one that only I controlled, and began saving diligently. Every deposit was a testament to my hard-earned independence. At the coffee shop, Rick handed me an envelope one morning. Bonus for all your hard work. And, we want you to consider a full-time manager position. Tears pricked my eyes, not just from the offer, but from the recognition. I, thank you, Rick. I'll think about it. That night, as I lay in bed reflecting on the day's events, I realized how far I had come. From a woman blindsided by betrayal, to one who was slowly but surely crafting a new life for herself. My journey was far from over, but I was no longer the same person who had watched her life crumble. I was becoming someone stronger, more resilient. ASI locked up the coffee shop, a sense of accomplishment settling over me. The days were long, but each one brought its own small triumphs. Hey, Melissa, wait up, Rick called out as I started down the street. He jogged to catch up, a serious look on his face. I just heard something about John. You okay talking about it? Sure, what's up? He tried pulling the same scams in another city. Didn't work out. Guys hit rock bottom from what I hear. A mix of emotions churned inside me. There was no joy in hearing about his downfall, but it did bring a sense of closure. Well, he made his choices, Rick. I just hope he learns from them like I did from mine. Speaking of learning, you've turned this place around. Ever think about starting your own business again? You've got the knack. The idea had crossed my mind. Maybe one day, Rick. For now, I'm just enjoying the peace of knowing I'm on solid ground. Later that week, I met with Linda for dinner, a small celebration of the latest victory in my financial recovery. You know, Melissa, watching you handle all this, it's inspiring. You really turned things around. It wasn't easy, Linda, but I had a lot of help. Couldn't have done it without people like you. As much as I love the praise, you did the heavy lifting. You're the one who made the tough calls, fought the battles. Our laughter blended with the clink of our glasses, a sound of victory and relief. The following morning, during my therapy session with Dr. Ellis, we discussed the recent news about John and my feelings of moving forward. It sounds like you've really come to terms with everything that's happened. How does that feel? 
Freeing, Dr. Ellis. It's like I've finally stepped out from under his shadow. I'm not just surviving, I'm thriving. That's a significant milestone, Melissa. You should be proud of how far you've come. I am, and I'm starting to think about the future again, about what I want it to look like. As the weeks passed, my life settled into a comfortable rhythm. Work at the coffee shop was fulfilling, and the possibility of starting my own venture someday didn't seem so far-fetched anymore. My financial stability allowed me to explore new interests and even take a vacation, something I hadn't thought possible a year ago. As I sat by the window in my newly rented apartment, journal in hand, I wrote down my thoughts and reflections. The lessons of the past few years were hard won, but invaluable. Trust, resilience, and the importance of community were themes that ran deep. John's betrayal, once a source of immense pain, now felt like a distant memory, a chapter long closed. The path ahead was clear and filled with possibilities. With my newfound strength and independence, I was ready to take on whatever came next. Life had thrown its worst at me, and I had emerged not just intact, but stronger. Now that we've reached the end of Melissa's journey from betrayal to triumph, here's a question to ponder. Do you think Melissa should have tried to confront John directly about his actions? Or was it wiser for her to focus on rebuilding her life without seeking that final confrontation? What would you do in her situation? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found Melissa's story inspiring, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more stories like this. Your engagement helps us keep bringing content that matters to you.